Here begins the vision of St. Paul the Apostle. But I will come to visions and revelations of Yahuwah. I know a man in Mashiach 14 years ago, whether in the body I know not, or out of the body I know not, Yano, snatched up in this manner to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I know not, Yano, how that he was snatched up into paradise and heard secret words which it is not lawful for men to speak. On behalf of such a one will I glory, but on mine own behalf I will not glory, save in my infirmities. 2 Corinthians 12, 1-5 At what time was this revelation made? In the consulship of Theodosius Augustus the Younger and Sinegius, a certain nobleman then living in Tarsus, and the house which was that of St. Paul, an angel appearing in the night revealed to him, saying that he should open the foundations of the house and should publish what he found. But he thought that these things were dreams. But the angel coming for the third time beat him and forced him to open the foundation. And digging, he found a marble box inscribed on the sides. There was the revelation of St. Paul and his shoes in which he walked, teaching the word of Yah. But he feared to open that box and brought it to the judge. When he had received it, the judge, because it was sealed with lead, sent it to the emperor Theodosius, fearing lest it might be something else which when he had received, the emperor opened it and found the revelation of St. Paul. A copy of it he sent to Jerusalem and retained the original himself. While I was in the body in which I was snatched up to the third heaven, the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, Speak to the people. Until when will you transgress and heap sin upon sin and tempt Yahuwah who made you? You are the sons of Yah doing the works of the devil in the faith of Mashiach, on account of the impediments of the world. Remember, therefore, and know that while every creature serves Yah, the human race alone sins, but it reigns over every creature and sins more than all nature. For indeed the Son, the great light, often addressed Yahuwah, saying, Master Yahuwah Elohim, I look out upon the impieties and injustices of men, Permit me, and I shall do unto them what are my powers, that they may know that you are Yah alone. And there came a voice saying to him, I know all these things, for my eye sees and my ear hears, but my patience bears them until they be converted and repent. But if they do not return to me, I will judge them all. For sometimes the moon and stars addressed Yahuwah, saying, Master Yahuwah Elohim, to us you have given the power of the night. Till when shall we look down upon the impieties and fornications and homicides done by the sons of men? Permit us to do unto them according to our powers, that they may know that you are Yah alone. And there came a voice unto them, saying, I know all these things, and my eye looks forth, and my ear hears. But my patience bears with them until they shall be converted and repent. But if they do not return unto me, I will judge them. And frequently also the sea exclaimed, saying, Master Yahuwah Elohim, men have defiled your holy name in me. Permit me to arise and cover every wood and orchard and the whole world until I blot out all the sons of men from before your face, that they may know that you are Yah alone. And the voice came again and said, I know all things. My eye sees everything, and my ear hears, but my patience bears with them until they be converted and repent. But if they do not return, I will judge them. Sometimes the waters also spoke against the sins of men, saying, Master Yahuwah Elohim, all the sons of men have defiled your holy name. And there came a voice saying, I know all things before they come to pass. For my eye sees and my ear hears all things, but my patience bears with them until they be converted. But if not, I will judge them. Frequently also the earth too exclaimed to Yahuwah against the sons of men, saying, Master Yahuwah Elohim, I above every other creature of yours am harmed, supporting the fornications, adulteries, homicides, thefts, perjuries, and magic, and ill-doings of men, and all the evil they do, 
so that the Father rises up against the Son, and the Son upon the Father, and the alien against the alien, so that each one defiles his neighbor's wife. The Father ascends upon the bed of his own Son, and the Son likewise ascends the couch of his own Father. And in all these evils, they who offer the sacrifice to your name have defiled your holy place. Therefore I am injured above every creature, desiring not to show my power to myself and my fruits to the sins of men. Permit me, and I will destroy the virtue of my fruits. And there came a voice and said, I know all things, and there is none who can hide himself from his sin. Moreover, I know their impieties, but my holiness suffers them, and so they be converted and repent. But if they do not return unto me, I will judge them. Behold, you sons of men, the creature is subject to Yah, but the human race alone sins. For this cause, therefore, you sons of men, bless Yahuwah Alihim unceasingly every hour and every day, but more especially when the sun has set. For at that hour all the angels proceed to Yahuwah to worship him and to present the works of men, which every man has wrought from the morning till the evening, whether good or evil. And there is a certain angel who proceeds rejoicing concerning the man in whom he dwells. When therefore the sun has set in the first hour of the night, in the same hour the angel of every people and every man and woman who protects and preserves them, because man is the image of Yah. Similarly, also in the matin hour, which is the twelfth of the night, all the angels of men and women go up to Yah and worship Yah and present every work which each man has wrought, whether good or evil. Moreover, every day and night, the angels show to Yah an account of all the acts of the human race. To you, therefore, I say, you sons of men, bless Yahuwah Elohim without fail all the days of your life. Therefore, at the appointed hour, all the angels, whatever, rejoicing at once together, proceed before Yah, that they may meet to worship at the hour determined. And behold, suddenly, it became the hour of meeting, and the angels came to worship in the presence of Yah. And the Spirit proceeded to meet them, and there came a voice and said, Where do you come from, our angels, bearing the burdens of tidings? They answered and said, We come from those who have renounced this world for the sake of your holy name, wandering as pilgrims and in caves of the rocks, and weeping every hour in which they inhabited the earth and hungry and thirsting because of your name, with their loins girded, and having in their hands the incense of their hearts, and praying and blessing every hour, and restraining and overcoming themselves, weeping and wailing above the rest that inhabit the earth. And we indeed, their angels, mourn along with them. Whither therefore it shall please you, command us to go and minister, before others also do it, but the destitute above the rest who are on the earth. And there came the voice of Yah to them, saying, Know ye that now henceforward my grace is appointed unto you, and my help, who is my well-beloved Son, shall be present with them, guiding them every hour, ministering also to them, never deserting them, since their place is his habitation. When therefore these angels had retired, behold, other angels came to adore in the presence of honor, and the assembly who wept. And the Spirit of Yah proceeded to meet them, and there came the voice of Yah, and said, Whence come ye, our angels, bearing the burdens of the ministry of the tidings of the world? They answered and said, In the presence of Yah, we have arrived from those who called upon your name, and the impediments of the world have made them wretched, devising many occasions every hour, not even making one pure prayer, nor out of their whole heart in the time of all their life. What need, therefore, is there to be present with men who are sinners? And there came the voice of Yah to them. It is necessary that you should minister to them, until they be converted and repent. But if they do not return unto me, I will judge them. Know, therefore, sons of men, that whatever things are wrought by you, these angels relate to Yah, whether good or evil. And the angel answered and said unto me, Follow me, and I will show you the place of the just where they are led when they are deceased. And after these things, taking you into the abyss, 
I will show you the souls of sinners and what sort of place they are led into when they have deceased. And I proceeded back after the angel, and he led me into heaven. And I looked back upon the firmament, and I saw in the same place power. And there was oblivion which deceives and draws down to itself the hearts of men, and the spirit of detraction, and the spirit of fornication, and the spirit of madness, and the spirit of insolence. And there were their princes of vices. These I saw under the firmament of heaven. And again I looked back, and I saw angels without mercy, having no pity, whose countenance was full of madness, and their teeth sticking out beyond the mouth. Their eyes shone like the morning star of the east, and from the hairs of their head sparks of fire went out, or from their mouth. And I asked the angel, saying, Sir, who are those? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are those who are destined to the souls of the impious and the hour of need, who did not believe that they had Yahuwah for their helper, nor hoped in him. And I looked on high, and I saw other angels whose countenance shone as the sun, their loins girded with golden girdles, having palms in their hands, and the sign of Yah, clothed with garments in which was written the name of the son of Yah, filled moreover with all meekness and pity. And I asked the angel, saying, Who are these, Master, and so great beauty and pity? And the angel answered and said unto me, these are the angels of justice who are sent to lead up the souls of the just in the hour of need, who believe that they had Yahuwah for their helper. And I said to him, Do the just and sinners necessarily meet witnesses when they have died? And the angel answered and said unto me, There is one way by which all pass over to Yah, but the just having their helper with them are not confounded when they go to appear in the sight of Yah. And I said to the angel, I wish to see the souls of the just and of sinners going out of the world. And the angel answered and said unto me, Look down upon the earth. And I looked down from heaven upon the earth, and saw the whole world, and it was nothing in my sight. And I saw the sons of men as though they were not, and a wanting. And I wondered and said to the angel, Is this the greatness of men? And the angel answered and said unto me, It is. And these are they who do evil from morning till evening. And I looked and saw a great cloud of fire spread over the whole world. And I said to the angel, What is this, my master? And he said to me, This is injustice stirred up by the princes of sinners. I indeed, when I had heard this, sighed and wept and said to the angel, I wish to see the souls of the just and of sinners and to see in what manner they go out of the body. And the angel answered and said unto me, Look again upon the earth. And I looked and saw all the world, and men were as not, and a wanting. And I looked carefully and saw a certain man about to die. And the angel said to me, This one whom you see is a just man. And I looked again and saw all his works, whatever he had done for the sake of Yah's name, and all his desires, both what he remembered and what he did not remember. They all stood in his sight in the hour of need. And I saw the just man advance and find refreshment and confidence. And before he went out of the world, the holy and the impious angels both attended. And I saw them all, but the impious found no place of habitation in him. But the holy took possession of his soul, guiding it till it went out of the body. And they roused the soul, saying, Soul, know your body whence you go out. For it is necessary that you should return to the same body on the day of resurrection, that you may receive the things promised to all the just. Receiving therefore the soul from the body, they immediately kissed it as familiarly known to them, saying to it, Do manfully, for you have done the will of Yahweh placed on the earth. And they came to meet him, the angel who watched him every day, and said to him, Do manfully, soul, for I rejoice in you, because you have done the will of Yah on the earth. For I related to Yah all your works, such as they were. Similarly, also the Spirit proceeded to meet him and said, Soul, fear not, nor be disturbed, until you come into a place which you have never known. But I will be a helper unto you, for I found in you a place of refreshment in the same time when I dwelt in you while I was on the earth. And his Spirit strengthened him, and his angel received him, and led him into heaven. And an angel said, where do you run, O soul, and do you dare to enter into heaven? 
Wait, and let us see if there is anything of ours in you. And behold, we find nothing in you. I see also your divine helper and angel, and the Spirit is rejoicing along with you, because you have done the will of Yah on earth. And they led him along till he should worship in the sight of Yah. And when they had ceased, immediately Michael and all the army of the angels said with one voice, Adore the footstool of his feet and his doom, saying at the same time to the soul, This is your Alatum of all things, who made you in his own image and likeness. Moreover, the angel returned and points him out, saying, Yeah, remember his labors, for this is the soul whose works I related to you, doing according to your judgment. And the Spirit said likewise, I am the Spirit of vivification inspiring him, for I had refreshment in him in the time when I dwelt in him, doing according to your judgment. And there came the voice of Yah and said, Inasmuch as this man did not vex me, neither will I vex him. For according as he had pity, I will also have pity. Let him therefore be handed over to Michael, the angel of the covenant, and let him lead him into the paradise of joy, that he himself may become co-heir with all the saints. And after these things I heard the voices of a thousand thousand angels, and archangels, and cherubim, and twenty-four elders saying hymns, and glorifying Yahuwah, and crying, You are just, O Yah, and just are your judgments, and there is no acceptance of persons with you, but you reward us to every man according to your judgment. And the angel answered and said unto me, Hast you believed and known? that whatever each man of you has done, he sees in the hour of need? And I said, Yes, sir. And he said to me, Look again down on the earth, and watch the soul of an impious man going out of the body, which vexed Yahuwah day and night, saying, I know nothing else in this world. I eat and drink and enjoy what is in the world. For who is there who has descended into hell, and ascending has declared to us that there is judgment there? And again I looked carefully, and saw all the scorn of the sinner, and all that he did. And they stood together before him in the hour of need. And it was done to him in that hour in which he was threatened about his body at the judgment. And I said, It were better for him if he had not been born. And after these things there came at the same time the holy angels and the malign. And the soul of the sinner and the holy angels did not find a place in it. Moreover, the malign angels cursed it, and when they had drawn it out of the body, the angels admonished it a third time, saying, O wretched soul, look upon your flesh whence you came out, for it is necessary that you should return to your flesh in the day of resurrection, that you may receive the due for your sins and your impieties. And when they had led it forth, the customary angel preceded it and said to it, O wretched soul, I am the angel belonging to you. Relating daily to Yahuwah your malign works, whatever you did by day or night. And if it were in my power, not for one day would I minister to you. But none of these things was I able to do. The judge is pitiful and just, and he himself commanded us that we should not cease to minister to the soul till you should repent. For you have lost the time of repentance. I was indeed strange to you and you to me. Let us go on then to the just judge. I will not dismiss you before I know from today why I was strange to you. And the spirit confounded him, and the angel troubled him. When, therefore, they had arrived at the power, when he started to enter heaven, a labor was imposed upon him, above all other labor. Error and oblivion and murmuring met him, and the spirit of fornication and the rest of the powers, and said to him, Where go you, wretched soul? And dare you enter to rush into heaven? Hold, that we may see if we have our qualities in you, since we do not see that you have a holy helper. And after that I heard voices in the height of heaven saying, Present that wretched soul to Yah, that it may know that it is Yah that is despised. When therefore it had entered heaven, all the angels saw it. A thousand thousand exclaimed with one voice, all saying, Woe to you, wretched soul, for the sake of your work which you did on the earth. What answer are you about to give to Yah when you shall have approach to adore him? The angel who was with it answered and said, Weep with me, my beloved, for I have not found rest in this soul. 
And the angels answered him and said, Let such a soul be taken away from the midst of ours. For from the time he entered, the stink of him crosses to us angels. And after these things it was presented, that it might worship in the sight of Yah. And an angel of Yah showed him Yah, who made him after his own image and likeness. Moreover, his angel ran before him, saying, Master Yahuwah Elohim, I am the angel of this soul, whose works I presented to you day and night, not doing according to your judgment. And the spirit likewise said, I am the spirit who dwelt in it from the time it was made. In itself, moreover, I know it, and it has not followed my will. Judge it, Master, according to your judgment. And there came the voice of Yahuwah to it, and said, what is your fruit, which you have made worthy of the goods which you have received? Have I put a distance of one day between you and the just man? Did I not make the sun to arise upon you as upon the just? But the soul was silent, having nothing to answer. And again there came a voice saying, Just is the judgment of Yahuwah, and there is no acceptance of persons with him. For whoever shall have done mercy, on them shall he have mercy. And whoever shall not have pity, neither shall Yah pity him. Let him therefore be handed over to the angel Tartaruk, who was set over the punishments, and let him place him in outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, and let him be there till the great day of judgment. And after these things, I heard the voice of the angels and the archangels saying, You are just, Master, and your judgment is just. And again I saw, and behold, a soul which was led forward by two angels, weeping and saying, Have pity on me, just Elohim, Yahuwah the judge. For today is seven days since I went out of my body, and I was handed over to these two angels, and they led me through those places, which I had never seen. And Yahuwah, the just judge, said to him, What have you done? For you never did mercy. Wherefore you were handed over to such angels as have no mercy. And because you did not do uprightly, so neither did they act piously with you in the hour of your need. Confess therefore your sins, which you did commit when placed in the world. And he answered and said, Yahuwah, I did not sin. And Yahuwah, the just Elohim, was angered in fury when it said, I did not sin, because it lied. And Yahuwah said, Do you think that you are still in the world? If any one of you sinning there, conceal and hide his sin from his neighbor, here indeed nothing whatever shall be hid. For when the souls come to a door in the sight of the throne, both the good works and the sins of each one are made manifest. And hearing these things, the soul was silent, having nothing to answer. And I heard Yahuwah Elohim, the just judge, again saying, Come, angel of this soul, and stand in the midst. And the angel of the sinful soul came, having in his hands a manuscript, and said, These, Yahuwah, in my hands, are all the sins of this soul from his youth till today, from the tenth year of his birth, and if you command, Yahuwah, I will also relate his acts from the beginning of his fifteenth year. And Yahuwah Elohim, the just judge, said, I say unto you, angel, I do not expect of you an account of him since he began to be fifteen years old, but state his sins for five years before he died and before he came here. And again, Elohim, the just judge, said, For by myself I swear, and by my holy angels, and by my virtue, that if he had repented five years before he died, on account of one year's life, oblivion would now be thrown over all the evils which he sinned before, and he would have indulgence and remission of sins. Now indeed he shall perish. And the angel of the sinful soul answered and said, Master, Command that angel to exhibit those souls. And in that same hour the souls were exhibited in the midst, and the soul of the sinner knew them. And Yahuwah said to the soul of the sinner, I say unto you, soul, confess your work which you wrought us in these souls, whom you see when they were in the world. And he answered and said, Yahuwah, it is not yet a full year since I slew this one and poured his blood upon the ground. And with another, a woman, I committed fornication. Not this alone, but I also greatly harmed her in taking away her goods. And the master Elohim, the just judge, said, Either you did not know that he who does violence to another, if he dies first who sustains the violence, is kept in this place until the doer of hurt dies, and then both stand in the presence of the judge, and now each receives according to his deed. 
And I heard the voice of one saying, Let that soul be delivered into the hand of Tartarus, and led down into hell. He shall lead him into the lower prison, and he shall be put there in torment, and left there until the great day of judgment. And again I heard a thousand thousand angels saying hymns to Yahuwah and crying, You are just a Yahuwah, and just are your brothers. The angel answered and said unto me, Have you perceived all these things? And I said, Yes, sir. And he said to me, Follow me again, and I will take you and show you the places of the just. And I followed the angel, and he raised me to the third heaven, and placed me at the entry of the door. And looking carefully, the door was of gold, and two columns of gold, full above of golden letters. And the angel turned again to me and said, Blessed were you, if you had entered into these doors. For it is not allowed to any to enter, except only to those who have goodness and innocence of body in all things. And I asked the angel about everything, and said, Sir, Tell me on what account these letters are put upon the tables. The angel answered and said unto me, These are the names of the just, serving Yahuwah with their whole heart, who dwell on the earth. And again I said, Sir, therefore their names and countenance and the likeness of those who serve Yah are in heaven and are known to the angels, for they know who are the servants of Yah with all their heart before they go out of the world. And when I had entered the interior of the gate of paradise, there came out to meet me an old man whose countenance shone as the sun. And when he had embraced me, he said, Hail, Paul, beloved of Yahuwah. And he kissed me with a cheerful countenance. He wept, and I said to him, Brother, why do you weep? And again, sighing and lamenting, he said, We are hurt by men, and they vex us greatly. For many are the good things which Yahuwah has prepared, and great is his promise, but many do not receive them. And I asked the angel and said, Sir, who is this? And he said to me, This is Enoch, the scribe of righteousness. And I entered into the interior of that place, and immediately I saw the sun, and coming it saluted me, laughing and rejoicing. And when it had seen me, it turned away and wept, and said to me, Paul, would that you should receive thy labors which you have done in the human race. For me, indeed, I have seen the great and many good things which Yah has prepared for the just, and the promises of Yahuwah are great, but many do not perceive them. But even by many labors, scarcely one or two enters into these places. And the angel answered and said to me, Whatever I now show you here, and whatever you shall hear, tell it not to anyone in the earth. And he led me and showed me, and there I heard words which it is not lawful for man to speak. And again he said, For now follow me, and I will show you what you ought to narrate in public and relate. And he took me down from the third heaven, and led me into the second heaven. And again he led me unto the firmament, and from the firmament he led me over the doors of heaven. The beginning of his foundations was on the river which waters all the earth. And I asked the angel and said, Master, what is this river of water? And he said to me, This is Oceanus. And suddenly I went out of heaven, and I understood that it is the light of heaven which lightens all the earth, for the land there is seven times brighter than silver. And I said, Master, what is this place? And he said to me, This is the land of promise. Have you never heard what is written? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The souls, therefore, of the just, when they have gone out of the body, are meanwhile dismissed to this place. And I said to the angel, then this land will be manifested before the time? The angel answered and said to me, When Mashiach, whom you preach, shall come to reign, then by the sentence of Yah the first earth will be dissolved, and this land of promise will then be revealed, and it will be like dew or cloud. And then the master Yahushua HaMashiach, the King Eternal, will be manifested and will come with all his saints to dwell in it, and he will reign over them one thousand years and they will eat of the good things which I shall now show unto you. And I looked around upon that land, and I saw a river flowing of milk and honey, and there were trees planted by the bank of that river, full of fruit. Moreover, each single tree bore twelve fruits in the year, having various and diverse fruits. And I saw the created things which are in that place, and all the work of Yah. And I saw their palms of twenty cubits, but others of ten cubits, and that land was seven times brighter than silver. 
And there were trees full of fruits from the roots to the highest branches of 10,000 fruits of palms upon 10,000 fruits. The grapevines, moreover, had 10,000 plants. Moreover, in the single vines, there were 10,000 thousand bunches and in each of these, a thousand single grapes. Moreover, these single trees bore a thousand fruits. And I said to the angel, Why does each tree bear a thousand fruits? The angel answered and said unto me, Because the master Yahuwah Elohim gives an abounding flood of gifts to the worthy, because they also of their own will afflicted themselves when they were placed in the world, doing all things on account of his holy name. And again I said to the angel, Sir, are these the only promises which the most holy Yahuwah makes? And he answered and said to me, No, there are seven times greater than these. But I say unto you that when the just go out of the body, they shall see the promises and the good things which Yah has prepared for them. Till then they shall sigh and lament, saying, Have we omitted any word from our mouth to vex our neighbor even on one day? I asked and said again, Are these alone the promises of Yah? And the angel answered and said unto me, These whom you now see are the souls of the married, and those who kept the chastity of their nuptials, containing themselves. But to the virgins and those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, and those who afflicted themselves for the sake of the name of Yah, Yahuwah would give seven times greater than these, which I shall now show you. And then he took me up from that place where I saw these things, and behold, a river, and its waters were greatly wider than milk. And I said to the angel, What is this? And he said to me, This is the Atrusian lake, where is the city of Mashiach. But not every man is permitted to enter into that city, for this is the journey which leads to Yahuwah. And if anyone is a fornicator and impious, and is converted and shall repent, and do fruits worthy of repentance, at first indeed when he shall have gone out of the body, he is led and adores Yah, and thence by command of Yahuwah he is delivered to the angel Michael, and he baptizes him in the Atrusian lake. Thus he leads them into the city of Mashiach, alongside of those who have never sinned. But I wondered and blessed Yahuwah Elohim for all the things that I saw. And the angel answered and said unto me, Follow me, and I will lead you into the city of Mashiach. And he was standing on the Atrusian lake, and he put me into a golden ship. And angels, as it were three thousand, were saying hymns before me, till I arrived at the city of Mashiach. Moreover, those who inhabited the city of Mashiach greatly rejoiced over me as I went to them. And I entered and saw the city of Mashiach, and it was all of gold, and twelve walls encircled it, and twelve interior towers, and each wall had between them a single stadia and the circuit. And I said to the angel, Sir, how much is a stadium? The angel answered and said to me, As much as there is between Yahuwah Elohim and the men who are on the earth, for the city of Mashiach is alone great. And there were twelve gates in the circuit of the city, of great beauty, and four rivers which encircled it. There was, moreover, a river of honey, and a river of milk, and a river of wine, and a river of oil. And I said to the angel, What are these rivers surrounding that city? And he said to me, These are the four rivers which flow sufficiently for those who are in this land of promise, of which the names are, The river of honey is called Pishon, and the river of milk, Euphrates, and the river of oil, Gihon, and the river of wine, Tigris. Such, therefore, they are for those who, when placed in the world, did not use the power of these things, but they hungered for these things, and afflicted themselves for the sake of Yahuwah Elohim. So that when these enter into this city, Yahuwah will assign them these things on high above all measure. I indeed, entering the gate, saw trees great and very high before the doors of the city, having no fruit but leaves only. And I saw a few men scattered in the midst of the trees, and they lamented greatly when they saw any one enter the city. And those trees were sorry for them, and humbled themselves, and bowed down, and again erected themselves. And I saw and wept with them, and I asked the angel and said, Sir, who are these who are not admitted to enter into the city of Mashiach? And he said to me, These are they who zealously abstain day and night in fasts, but they have a proud heart above other men glorifying and praising themselves and doing nothing for their neighbors. For they gave some friendly greeting, but to others they did not even say hail. And indeed they showed hospitality to those only whom they wished. And if they did anything whatever for their neighbor, they were immoderately puffed up. And I said, What then, sir? 
Did their pride prevent them from entering into the city of Mashiach? And the angel answered and said unto me, Pride is the root of all evils. Are they better than the son of Yah who came to the Jews with much humility? And I asked him and said, Why is it that the trees humble themselves and erect themselves again? The angel answered and said to me, The whole time which these men pass on earth zealously serving Yah, on account of the confusion and reproaches of men at the time, they blushed and humiliated themselves, but they were not saddened, nor did they repent that they should recede from the pride that was in them. This is why the trees humble themselves and again are raised up. And I asked and said, For what cause were they admitted to the doors of the city? The angel answered and said unto me, Because of the great goodness of Yahuwah, and because there is the entry of his holy men entering into this city. For this cause they are left in this place. But when Mashiach, the King Eternal, enters with his saints, as he enters, just men may pray for these, and then they may enter into the city along with them. But yet, none of them is able to have assurance, such as they who have humbled themselves, serving Yahuwah Elohim all their lives. But I went on while the angel instructed me, and he carried me to the river of honey. And I saw there Isaiah, and Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, and Amos, and Micah, and Zechariah, the minor and major prophets, and they saluted me in the city. I said to the angel, What way is this? And he said to me, This is the way of the prophets. Everyone who shall have afflicted his soul, and not done his own will because of Elohim, when he shall have gone out of the world, and have been led to Yehu Elohim, and adored him, then by the command of Elohim he is handed over to Michael, and he leads him into the city, to this place of the prophets, and they salute him as their friend and neighbor, because he did the will of Elohim. Again he led me where there is a river of milk, and I saw in that place all the infants whom Herod slew because of the name of Mashiach. And they saluted me, and the angel said to me, All who keep their chastity with purity, when they shall have come out of the body, after they adore you, who Elohim, are delivered to Michael, and are led to the infants, and they salute them, saying, That they are our brothers and friends and members, and themselves they shall inherit the promises of Elohim. Again he took me up and carried me to the north of the city, and led me where there was a river of wine. And there I saw Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, Lot and Job and other saints, and they saluted me. And I asked and said, What is this place, my master? The angel answered and said to me, All who are receivers of pilgrims, when they go out of the world, first adore Yahuwah Elohim and are delivered to Michael, and by this way are led into the city. And all the just salute him as son and brother, and say unto him, Because you have observed humanity and the receiving of pilgrims, Come, have an inheritance in the city of Yahuwah our Elohim. Every just man shall receive good things of Yahuwah in the city, according to his own action. And again he carried me near the river of oil on the east of the city. And I saw their men rejoicing and singing psalms. And I said, Who are those, my master? And the angel said to me, Those are they who devoted themselves to Yahuwah with their whole heart and had no pride in themselves. For all those who rejoice in Yahuwah Elohim and sing psalms to Yahuwah with their whole heart are here led into the city. And he carried me into the midst of the city, near the twelve walls. But there was in this place a higher wall, and I asked and said, Is there in the city of Mashiach a wall which in honor exceeds this place? And the angel answering said to me, There is a second better than the first, and similarly a third than the second, as each exceeds the other unto the twelfth wall. And I said, Tell me, sir, why one exceeds another in glory. And the angel answered and said unto me, All who have in themselves even a little detraction or zeal or pride, something of his glory would be made void even if he were in the city of Mashiach. Look backward. And turning round, I saw golden thrones placed in each gate, and on them men having golden diadems and gems. And I looked carefully, and I saw inside between the twelve men thrones placed in another rank which appeared of much glory, so that no one is able to recount their praise. And I asked the angel and said, My master, who is on the throne? And the angel answered and said unto me, 
Those thrones belonged to those who had goodness and understanding of heart, and made themselves fools for the sake of Yahu Elohim, nor knew new scriptures nor psalms, but mindful of one chapter of the commands of Yahuwah, and hearing what it contained, they wrought thereby in much diligence in how to write zeal before Yahu Elohim, and the admiration of them will seize all the saints in the presence of Yahu Elohim. For talking with one another, they say, Wait, and see the unlearned who know nothing more, but by which means they go merited so great and such a garment and so great glory on account of their innocence. And I saw in the midst of the city a great altar, very high, and there was one standing near the altar whose countenance shone as the sun, and he held in his hands a psaltery and harp, and he sang psalms, saying, Hallelujah, and his voice filled the whole city. At the same time, when all they who were on the towers and gates heard him, they responded, Hallelujah, so that the foundations of the city were shaken. And I asked the angel and said, Sir, who is this of so great power? And the angel said to me, This is David. This is the city of Jerusalem. For when Mashiach, the king of eternity, shall come with the assurance of his kingdom, he shall again go before him that he may sing psalms. And all the just at the same time shall sing psalms, responding, Hallelujah. And I said, Sir, how did David alone above the other saints make a beginning of psalm singing? And the angel answered and said unto me, because Mashiach, the son of Yahuwah, sits at the right hand of his father, and this David sings psalms before him in the seventh heaven. And as is done in the heavens, so also below, because the host may not be offered to Yahuwah without David. But it is necessary that David should sing psalms in the hour of the oblation of the body and blood of Yahusha. As it is performed in heaven, so also in the earth. And I said to the angel, Sir, what is hallelujah? And the angel answered and said to me, You ask questions about everything. And he said to me, Hallelujah is said in the Hebrew language of Yahuwah and angels. For the meaning of hallelujah is this, Tesel kat marith maka. And I said, Sir, what is Tesel kat marith maka? And the angel answered and said unto me, Tesel kat marith maka is, Let us all barak him together. I asked the angel and said, Sir, do all who say hallelujah barak Yahuwah? And the angel answered and said to me, It is so. And again, therefore, if anyone sing hallelujah and those who are present do not sing at the same time, they commit sin because they do not sing along with him. And I said, My master, does he also sin if he be hesitating or very old? The angel answered and said unto me, Not so, but he who is able and does not join in the singing, no such as a despiser of the word, and it would be proud and unworthy that he should not rock Yahuwah his maker. Moreover, when he had ceased speaking to me, he led me outside the city through the midst of the trees and far from the places of the land of the good, and put me across the river of milk and honey. And after that, he led me over the ocean which supports the foundation of heaven. The angel answered and said unto me, Do you understand why you go here? And I said, Yes, sir. And he said to me, Come and follow me, and I will show you the souls of the impious and sinners, that you may know what manner of place it is. And I proceeded with the angel, and he carried me by the setting of the sun, and I saw the beginning of heaven around it on a great river of water. And I asked, What is this river of water? And he said to me, This is ocean which surrounds all the earth. And when I was at the outer limit of ocean, I looked, and there was no light in that place, but darkness and sorrow and sadness, and I sighed. And I saw there a fervent river of fire, and in it a multitude of men and women immersed up to the knees, and other men up to the navel, others even up to the lips, others moreover up to the hair. And I asked the angel and said, Sir, who are those in the fiery river? And the angel answered and said to me, They are neither hot nor cold, because they were found neither in the number of the just, nor in the number of the impious. For those spent the time of their life on earth passing some days in prayer, but others in sins and fornications until their death. And I asked him and said, Who are these, sir, immersed up to their knees in fire? He answered and said to me, These are they who, when they have gone out of the assembly, throw themselves into strange conversations to dispute. Those indeed who were immersed up to the navel are those who, when they have taken the body and blood of Mashiach, go and fornicate and did not cease from their sins until they die.
Those who were immersed up to the lips are the detractors of each other when they assemble in the assembly of Yahuwah. Those up to the eyebrows are those who nod approval of themselves and plot spite against their neighbor. And I saw on the north a place of various and diverse punishments full of men and women, and a river of fire ran down into it. Moreover, I observed, and I saw pits great in depth, and in them several souls together. And the depth of that place was, as it were, three thousand cubits. And I saw them groaning and weeping and saying, Have pity on us, O master. And none had pity on them. And I asked the angel and said, Who are these, sir? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are they who did not hope in Yahuwah, that they would be able to have him as their helper. And I asked and said, Sir, if these souls remain for thirty or forty generations thus one upon another, if they were sent deeper, the pit, I believe, would not hold them. And he said to me, The abyss has no measure, for beyond this it stretches down below him who is down in it. And so it is, that if perchance anyone should take a stone and throw it into a very deep well, and after many hours it should reach the bottom, such is the abyss. For when the souls are thrown in there, they hardly reach the bottom in fifty years. I, indeed, when I heard this, wept and groaned over the human race. The angel answered and said unto me, Why do you weep? Are you more pitiful than Allahim? For though Allahim is good, he knows that there are punishments, and he patiently bears with the human race, dismissing each one to work his own will in the time in which he dwells on the earth. I further observed the fiery river, and saw there a man being tortured by Tavaruchian angels, having in their hands an iron with three hooks with which they pierced the bowels of that old man. And I asked the angel and said, Sir, who is that old man on whom such torments are imposed? And the angel answered and said to me, He whom you see was a presbyter, who did not perform well his ministry. When he had been eating and drinking and committing fornication, he offered the host to Yahuwah at his holy altar. And I saw not far away another old man led on by malign angels running with speed. And they pushed him into the fire up to his knees, and they struck him with stones, and wounded his face like a storm, and did not allow him to say, Have pity on me. And I asked the angel, and he said to me, He whom you see was a bishop, and did not perform well his episcopate, and indeed accepted the great name, but did not enter into the witness of him who gave him the name in all of his life, seeing that he did not do just judgment, and did not pity widows and orphans, but now he receives retribution according to his iniquity and his works. And I saw another man in the fiery river up to his knees. Moreover, his hands were stretched out and bloody, and worms proceeded from his mouth and nostrils, and he was groaning and weeping and crying, and he said, Have pity on me, for I am hurt above the rest who are in this punishment. And I asked, Sir, who is this? And he said to me, This man whom you see was a deacon, who devoured the oblations and committed fornications, and did not do right in the sight of Yahuwah. For this cause he unceasingly pays the penalty. And I looked closely and saw alongside of him another man whom they had delivered up with haste and cast into the fiery river, and he was in it up to the knees. And there came the angel who was set over the punishment, having a great fiery razor, and with it he cut the lips of that man, and the tongue likewise. And sighing, I lamented and asked, Who is that, sir? And he said to me, He whom you see was a reader, and read to the people, but he himself did not keep the precepts of Allahim. Now he also pays the proper penalty. And I saw another multitude of pits in the same place, and in the midst of it a river full of a multitude of men and women, and worms consumed them. But I lamented, and sighing, asked the angel, and said, Sir, who are these? And he said to me, These are those who exacted interest on interest, and trusted in their riches, and did not hope in Yahuwah that he was their helper. And after that I looked and saw another place, very narrow, and it was like a wall and fire round about it. And I saw inside men and women gnawing their tongues. And I asked, Sir, who are these? And he said to me, These are they who in the assembly disparage the word of Yahuwah, not attending to it, but as it were, make nothing of Yahuwah and his angels. For that cause they now likewise pay the proper penalty. And I observed and saw another old man down in a pit, and his countenance was like blood. And I asked and said, Sir, what is this place? And he said to me, Into that pit stream all the punishments. And I saw men and women immersed up to the lips, and I asked, 
Sir, who are these? And he said to me, These are the magicians who prepared for men and women evil magic arts and did not find how to stop them till they died. And again, I saw men and women with very black faces in a pit of fire. And I sighed and lamented and asked, Sir, who are these? And he said to me, These are fornicators and adulterers who committed adultery having wives of their own. Likewise, also the women committed adultery having husbands of their own. Therefore, they unceasingly suffer penalties. And I saw their girls having black raiment, and four terrible angels having in their hands burning chains. And they put them on the necks of the girls, and led them into darkness. And I, again weeping, asked the angel, Who are these, sir? And he said to me, These are they who, when they were virgins, defiled their virginity unknown to their parents, for which cause they unceasingly pay the proper penalties. And I again observed there men and women with hands cut, and their feet placed naked in a place of ice and snow, and worms devoured them. But seeing them, I lamented and asked, Sir, who are these? And he said to me, These are they who harmed orphans and widows and the poor, and did not hope in Yahuwah, for which cause they unceasingly pay the proper penalties. And I observed and saw others hanging over a channel of water, and their tongues were very dry, and many fruits were placed in their sight and they were not permitted to take of them. And I asked, Sir, who are these? Then he said to me, These are they who break their fast before the appointed hour. For this cause they unceasingly pay these penalties. And I saw other men and women hanging by their eyebrows and their hair, and a fiery river drew them. And I said, Who are these, my master? And he said to me, these are they who join themselves not to their own husbands and wives, but to whores, and therefore they unceasingly pay the proper penalties. And I saw other men and women covered with dust, and their countenance was like blood, and they were in a pit of pitch and sulfur and running down into a fiery river. And I asked, Sir, who are these? And he said to me, These are they who committed the iniquity of Sodom and Gomorrah, the male with the male, for which reason they unceasingly pay the penalties. And I observed and saw men and women clothed in bright garments, having their eyes blind, placed in a pit. And I asked, Sir, who are these? These are of the people who did alms and knew not Yahuwah Elohim, for which reason they unceasingly pay the proper penalties. And I observed and saw other men and women on an obelisk of fire and beasts tearing them in pieces. And they were not allowed to say, Master, have pity on us. And I saw the angel of penalties putting heavy punishments on them, and saying, Acknowledge the Son of Elohim, for this was predicted to you, when the divine scriptures were read to you, and you did not attend, for which cause Elohim's judgment is just, for your actions have apprehended you and brought you into these penalties. But I sighed and wept, and I asked and said, Who are these men and women who are strangled in fire and pay their penalties? And he answered me, these are women who defiled the image of Elohim when bringing forth infants out of the womb, and these are the men who lay with them. And their infants addressed Yahuwah Elohim and the angels who were set over the punishments, saying, Cursed be the hour to our parents, for they defiled the image of Elohim, having the name of Elohim but not observing his precepts. They gave us for food to dogs and to be trodden down of swine, others they threw into the river. But their infants were handed over to the angels of Tartarus, who were set over the punishments, that they might lead them into a wide place of mercy. But their fathers and mothers were tortured in a perpetual punishment. And after that I saw men and women clothed with rags full of pitch and fiery sulfur, and dragons were coiled about their necks and shoulders and feet, and angels having fiery horns restrained them and smote them and closed their nostrils, saying to them, why did you not know the time in which it was right to repent and serve Elohim, and did not do it? And I asked, Sir, who are these? And he said to me, These are they who seem to give up the world for Elohim, putting on their guard. But the impediments of the world made them wretched, not maintaining love, and they did not pity widows and orphans. They did not receive the stranger and the pilgrim, nor did they offer the oblations, and they did not pity their neighbor. Moreover, their prayer did not even on one day ascend pure to Yahuwah Elohim, but many impediments of the world detained them, and they were not able to do right in the sight of Elohim. And the angels enclosed them in the place of punishment. Moreover, they saw those who were in punishment and said to them, 
We indeed, when we lived in the world, neglected Elohim, and you also did likewise, as we also truly, when we were in the world, knew that you were sinners. But you said, These are just and servants of Elohim. Now we know why you are called by the name of the Master, for which cause they also pay their own penalties. And sighing, I wept and said, Woe unto men, woe unto sinners, why were they born? And the angel answered and said unto me, Why do you lament? Are you more pitiful than the master Yahuwah Elohim who was baruched forever, who established judgment and sent forth every man to choose good and evil in his own will and do what pleases him? Then I lamented again very greatly, and he said to me, Do you lament when as yet you have not seen greater punishments? Follow me, and you shall see seven times greater than these. And he carried me south and placed me above a well, and I found it sealed with seven seals. And answering, the angel who was with me said to the angel of that place, Open the mouth of the well, that Paul, the well beloved of Elohim, may see. For authority is given to him that he may see all the pains of hell. And the angel said to me, Stand afar off that you may be able to bear the stench of this place. When therefore the well was opened, immediately there arose from it a certain hard and malign stench, which surpasses all the punishments. And I looked into that well, and I saw fiery masses glowing in every part, and narrow places, and the mouth of the well was narrow, so as to admit one man only. And the angel answered and said unto me, If any man shall have been put into this well of the abyss, and it shall have been sealed over him, no remembrance of him shall ever be made in the sight of the Father, and his Son, and the holy messengers. And I said, Who are these, sir, who are put into this well? And he said to me, they are whoever shall not confess that Mashiach has come in the flesh, and that the Virgin Mary brought him forth. And whoever says that the bread and cup of the communion of Barakah are not this body and blood of Mashiach. And I looked to the south and the west, and I saw there a restless worm, and in that place there was gnashing of teeth. Moreover, the worm drew one cubit long, and had two heads. And there I saw men and women in cold and gnashing of teeth. And I asked and said, Sir, who are these in this place? And he said to me, These are they who say that Mashiach did not rise from the dead, and that this flesh will not rise again. And I asked and said, Sir, is there no fire nor heat in this place? And he said to me, In this place there is nothing else but cold and snow. And again he said to me, Even if the sun should rise upon them, they do not become warm on account of the superabundant cold of that place and the snow. But hearing these things, I stretched out my hands and wept, and sighing again I said, it were better for us if we had not been born, all of us who are sinners. But when those who were in the same place saw me weeping with the angel, they themselves cried out and wept, saying, Master Elohim, have mercy upon us. After these things, I saw the heavens open, and Michael the archangel descending from heaven, and with him was the whole army of angels. And they came to those who were placed in punishment, and seeing us with him, again weeping, they cried out and said, Have pity on us. Michael, the archangel, have pity on us and on the human race, for on account of your prayers the earth stands. We now see the judgment and acknowledge the son of Elohim. It was impossible for us before these things to pray for this, before we entered into this place. For we heard that there was a judgment before we went out of the world, but the impediments and the life of the world did not allow us to repent. And Michael answered and said, Hear Michael speaking. I am he who stands in the sight of Elohim every hour, as Yahuwah lives, in whose sight I stand. I do not intermit one day or one night praying incessantly for the human race, and I indeed pray for those who are on the earth. But they do not cease doing iniquity and fornications, and they do not bring to me any good while they are placed on the earth. And you have consumed in vanity the time in which you ought to have repented. But I have always prayed thus, and I now beseech that Allah he may send dew, and send forth rains upon the earth. And now I desire until the earth produce its fruits, and verily I say, that if any one have done but a little good, I will agonize for him, protecting him till he have escaped the judgment of penalties. Where therefore are your prayers? Where are your penances? You have lost your time contemptuously. But now weep, and I will weep with you, and the angels who are with me, with the well-beloved Paul, if perchance the merciful Elohim will have pity on you and give you refreshment. But hearing these words, they cried out and wept greatly, and said all with one voice, Have pity on us, son of Elohim. And I, Paul, sighed and said, O master Elohim, have pity on your creature, have pity on the sons of men, have pity on your image.
and I looked and saw the heaven move like a tree shaken by the wind. Suddenly, moreover, they threw themselves on their faces in the sight of the throne. And I saw twenty-four elders and twenty-four thousand adoring Elohim. And I saw an altar and a veil and throne, and all were rejoicing. And the smoke of a good odor was raised near the altar of the throne of Elohim. And I heard the voice of one saying, For the sake of what do you are angels and ministers intercede? And they cried out, saying, We intercede, seeing your many kindnesses to the human race. And after these things, I saw the son of Elohim descending from heaven, and a diadem was on his head. And seeing him, those who were placed in punishment exclaimed all with one voice, saying, Have pity, son of the Most High Elohim. You are he who shows refreshment for all in the heavens and on the earth, and on us likewise. Have pity, for since we have seen you, we have refreshment. And a voice went out from the son of Elohim through all the punishment, saying, and what work have you done that you demand refreshment for me? My blood was poured out for your sakes, and not even so did you repent. For your sakes, I wore the crown of thorns on my head. For you, I received buffets on my cheeks, and not even so did you repent. I asked water when hanging on the cross, and they gave me vinegar mixed with gall. With the spear, they opened my right side. And for my name's sake, they slew my prophet and just men. And in all these things, I gave you a place of repentance, and you would not. Now, however, for the sake of Michael, the archangel of my covenant, and the messengers who are with him, and because of Paul, the well beloved, whom I would not vex, for the sake of your brethren who are in the world, and all for oblations, and for the sake of your sons, because my precepts are in them, and more for the sake of mine own kindness, on the day which I rose from the dead, I give to you all who are in punishment a night and day of refreshment forever. And they all cried out and said, we Baruch you, son of Elohim, that you have given us a night and day of respite. For better to us is a refreshment of one day above all the time of our life which we were on the earth. And if we had plainly known that this was intended for those who sin, we would have worked no other work. We would have done no business, and we would have done no iniquity. For what need had we for pride in the world? For here our pride is crushed, which ascended from our mouth against our neighbor. Our plagues and excessive straightness and the tears and the worms which are under us, these are much worse to us than the pains which we have left behind us. When they said this, the malign angels of the penalties were angered with them, saying, How long do you lament and sigh? For you have no pity. For this is the judgment of Elohim who have no pity. For you receive this great grace of a day and a night's refreshment on Yahuwah's day for the sake of Paul the well-beloved of Elohim who descended to you. And after that, the messenger said to me, Have you seen all these things? And I said, Yes, sir. And he said to me, Follow me, and I will lead you into paradise, that the just who are there may see you. For behold, they hope to see you, and they are ready to come to meet you in joy and gladness. And I followed the angel by the impulse of the Ruach HaKodesh, and he placed me in paradise and said to me, This is paradise in which Adam and his wife erred. Moreover, I entered paradise and saw the beginning of waters, and there was an angel making a sign to me, and he said to me, Observe, said he, the waters, for this is a river of Pishon, which surrounds all the land of Havilah, and the second is Gion, which surrounds all the land of Egypt and Ethiopia, and the third is Tigris, which is over against the Assyrians, and another is Euphrates, which waters all the land of Mesopotamia. And when I had gone inside, I saw a tree planted from whose roots water flows out. And from this beginning there were four rivers. And the spirit of Elohim rested on that tree. And when the spirit blew, the waters flowed forth. And I said, My master, is it this tree itself which makes the waters flow? And he said to me, That from the beginning, before the heavens and earth were manifested, and all things here invisible, the spirit of Elohim was born upon the waters. But from the time when the command of Elohim made the heavens and earth to appear, the spirit rested upon this tree. Wherefore, whenever the spirit blows, the water flow forth from the tree. And he held me by the hand and led me near the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he said, This is the tree by which death entered into the world. And receiving of it through his wife, Adam ate and death entered into the world. And he showed me another tree in the midst of paradise and said to me, this is the tree of life. While I was yet looking upon the tree, I saw a virgin coming from afar, and two hundred angels before her sang hymns. And I asked and said, Sir, who is she who comes in so great esteem? And he said to me, 
This is Mary, the virgin, the mother of the master. And coming near, she saluted me and said, Hail, Paul, well beloved of Elohim and angels and men. For all the saints prayed, my son Yehusha, who was my master, that you might come here in the body, that they might see you before you go out of the world. And Yehusha said to them, Bear and be patient, yet a little, and you shall see him, and he shall be with you forever. And again they said to him together, Do not vex us, for we desire to see him in the flesh. For by him your name was greatly glorified in the world, and we have seen that he endured all the labors, whether of the greater or of the less. This we learn from those who come here. For when we say, Who is he who directed you in the world? And they reply to us, There is one in the world whose name is Paul. He preaches and announces Mashiach. And we believe that many have entered into the kingdom through the virtue and sweetness of his speeches. Behold, all the just men are behind me coming to meet you, Paul. And I first come for this cause to meet them who did the will of my son and my master, Yahushua Mashiach. I first advance to meet them and do not send them away to be as wanderers until they meet in peace. When she had spoken this, I saw three coming from afar, very beautiful in the likeness of Mashiach. And their forms were shining, and their messengers. And I asked, Sir, who are these? And he said to me, Do you not know who these are? And I said, No, sir. And he answered, These are the fathers of the people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And coming near, they saluted me and said, Hail, Paul, well beloved of Elohim and man. Baruch is he who suffers violence for Yahuwah's sake. And Abraham answered me and said, this is my son Isaac, and Jacob my well-beloved, and we have known you who and followed him. Baruch are all they who believe in your word, that they may be able to inherit the kingdom of Elohim by labor, by renunciation and sanctification and humility and charity and meekness and right faith in Yahuwah. And we have also had devotion to Yahuwah, whom you preach in the testament, that we might assist those who believed in him with their whole soul, and might minister unto them as fathers minister to their children. When they had spoken this, I saw other twelve coming from afar in honor, and I asked, Sir, who are these? And he said, These are the patriarchs. And coming near, they saluted me and said, Hail, Paul, well beloved of Elohim and men. Yahuwah did not vex us, that we might see you yet in the body, before you go out of the world. And each one of them reminded me of his name and order, from Reuben to Benjamin. And Joseph said to me, I am he who was sold. But I say to you, Paul, now all the things, whatever my brothers did to me, and nothing did I act maliciously with them, nor in all the labor which they imposed on me, nor in any point was I hurt by them on that account from morning till evening. Baruch is he who receives some hurt on account of Yahuwah, and bears it, for Yahuwah will repay to him manifold when he shall have gone out of the world. When he had spoken this, I saw another beautiful one coming from afar, and his angel sang hymns. And I asked, Sir, who is this that is beautiful of countenance? And he said to me, Do you not know him? And I said, No, sir. And he said to me, This is Moses, the lawgiver, to whom Elohim gave the Torah. And when he had come near me, he immediately wept. And after that, he saluted me. And I said to him, What do you lament for? For I have heard that you excel every man in meekness. And he answered me, saying, I weep for those whom I planted with toil, because they did not bear fruit, nor did any profit by them. And I saw all the sheep whom I fed, that they were scattered, and became as if they had no shepherd. And because all the toils which I endured for the sake of the sons of Israel were counted as nothing, and how great soever virtues I did in the midst of them, these they did not understand. And I wondered that strangers and uncircumcised and idol worshippers have been converted and have entered into the promises of Elohim, but Israel hath not entered. And now I say unto you, Brother Paul, that in the hour when the people hang Yehusha whom you preach, that the Father, the Elohim of all, who gave me the Torah, and Michael, and all the angels, and archangels, and Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and all the just wept over the son of Elohim hanging on the cross. In that hour, all the saints attended on me, looking, and they said to me, See, Moses, what men of your people have done to the son of Elohim. Wherefore, you are Baruch, Paul, and Baruch the generation and race which believed in your word. When he had spoken this far, there came other twelve, and seeing me said, Are you Paul the glorified in heaven and on earth? And I answered and said, 
What are you? The first answered and said, I am Isaiah, whom Manasseh cut asunder with a wooden saw. And the second said likewise, I am Jeremiah, who was stoned by the children of Israel and slain. And the third said, I am Ezekiel, whom the children of Israel dragged by the feet over a rock in a mountain till they knocked out my brains. And we endured all these toils, wishing to save the children of Israel. And I say unto you that after the toils which they laid upon me, I cast myself on my face in the sight of Elohim, praying for them, bending my knees until the second hour of Yahuwah's day, till Michael came and lifted me up from the earth. Baruch the you, Paul, and Baruch the nation which believed through you. And as these passed by, I saw another beautiful of countenance. And I asked, Sir, who is this? Who, when he had seen me, rejoiced and said to me, This is Lot who was found just in Sodom. And approaching, he saluted me and said, Baruch are you, Paul, and Baruch the generation to which you did minister. And I answered and said to him, Are you Lot who was found just in Sodom? And he said, I entertain angels as travelers, and when they of the city wished to violate them, I offered them my two virgin daughters who had not yet known men, and gave them to them, saying, Use them as you will, but only to these men you shall do no evil. For this cause they entered under the roof of my house. For this cause, therefore, we ought to be confident and know that if anyone shall have done anything, Elohim shall repay him manifold when they shall come to him. Baruch are you, Paul, and Baruch the nation which believe in your word. When therefore he had ceased talking to me, I saw another coming from a distance, very beautiful of countenance and smiling, and his angel sang hymns. And I said to the angel who was with me, Has then each of the just an angel for companion? And he said to me, Each one of the saints has his own messenger assisting him, and sang a hymn, and the one does not depart from the other. And I said, Who is this then, sir? And he said, This is Job. And approaching, he saluted me and said, Brother Paul, you have great praise with Elohim and men. And I am Job, who labored much for a period of thirty years, from a plague and the blood. And verily in the beginning, the wounds which went forth from my body were like grains of wheat. But on the third day they became as the foot of a donkey, worms moreover which fell four digits in length. And on the third day the devil appeared and said to me, Say something against Elohim and die. I said to him, If such be the will of Elohim that I should remain under a plague all the time of my life till I die, I shall not cease from baruching Yahuwah, and I shall receive more reward. For I know that the labors of that world which are nothing compared to the refreshment which is afterwards. For which cause Baruch are you, Paul, and Baruch the nation which believed through you. When he had spoken this far, another came calling from afar and saying, Baruch are you, Paul, and Baruch am I because I saw you, the beloved of Yahuwah. And I asked the angel, Sir, who is this? And he answered and said to me, This is Noah in the time of the deluge. And immediately we saluted each other, and greatly rejoicing, he said to me, You are Paul, the most beloved of Yahuwah. And I asked him, Who are you? And he said, I am Noah, who was in the time of the deluge. And I say to you, Paul, that working for a hundred years, I made the ark, not putting off the tunic with which I was clad, nor did I cut the hair of my head. So then also I cherished continence, not approaching my own wife. And those hundred years, not a hair of my head grew in length, nor did my garments become soiled. And I besought men at all times, saying, Repent, for a deluge of waters will come upon you. But they laughed at me and mocked my words. And again they said to me, But this is the time of those who are able to play and sin freely, desiring her with whom it is possible to commit fornication frequently. For Elohim does not regard this, and does not know what things are done by us men, and there is no flood of water straightway coming upon this world. And they did not cease from their sins, till Elohim destroyed all flesh which had the breath of life in it. Know then that Elohim loves one just man more than all the world of the envious. Wherefore, Baruch are you, Paul, and Baruch is a nation which believes through you. And turning around, I saw other just ones coming from afar, and I asked a messenger, Sir, who are those? And he answered me, These are Elijah and Elisha. And they saluted me, and I said to them, Who are you? And one of them answered and said, I am Elijah, the prophet of Elohim. I am Elijah who prayed, and because of my word, that heaven did not rain for three years and six months on account of the unrighteousness of men. Elohim is just and true, who does the will of his servants, 
For the angels often besought Yahuwah for rain, and he said, Be patient till my servant Elijah shall pray, and petition for this, and I will send rain on the earth. And often the messengers asked that he would give them rain, and he gave not, until I called upon him again, then he gave unto them. But Baruch are you, Paul, and not your generation, and that those who you teach are the sons of the kingdom. And know, Paul, that every man who believes through you has a great Barukah, and a Barukah is reserved for him. Then he departed from me. And the angel who was with me led me forth, and said unto me, Behold, unto you is given this mystery and revelation, as you please make it known unto the sons of men. And I, Paul, returned unto myself, and I knew all that I had seen, and in life I had not rest that I might reveal this mystery. But I wrote it and secured it under the ground and the foundation of a certain faithful man with whom I used to be, and Tarsus, a city of Cilicia. And when I was released from this life of time and stood before my Elohim, thus he said unto me, Paul, have we shown all these things unto you, that you should secure them under the foundation of a house? Then said, and disclose concerning this revelation that men may read it, and turn to the way of truth, that they may not also come to these bitter torments. Herein ends the vision of St. Paul the Apostle. May these words resonate with your soul. All esteem to Yahuwah Elohim and his son Yahushua HaMashiach forever and ever. Hallelujah.